this world of wargaming. Dream games. Dream games. I was uh, listening to somebody recently uh, in, in video, and he mentioned Squad Leader, the, the classic war game, and he mentioned that when he received the game, when it first came out, it, it was the game he had been waiting his whole life for. And that comment definitely uh, stuck in my mind. I'm sure there are not a few wargamers from the 1970s uh, who uh, can say something like that, like this uh, gentleman did in his video regarding Squad Leader. Now, it stood out in my mind <laughs> because I don't, because I simply don't have something like that. Um, um, only a few years into Hex Encounter War Games in any regular, uh, with any regularity, um, don't really have any, uh, experiences from those landmark, uh, times uh, or landmarks from the first decades of wargaming. So that's that. Um. But the comment did uh, bring me back to um, the idea of uh, my own quote-unquote uh, dream games. The first one is uh, a small unit combat action uh, simulation game. Um, this, of course, uh, is uh, a design I've been kicking around. So that's Troops in Contact or, or Tick. Um, why, why is this a dream game? Um, I think it's a dream game for me because, well, first of all, Tick, a small unit combat action game, uh, simulation game, is, is a design that I want to ring as true as possible to my own experience and, and the experiences of others I've known together. Um, so we are talking, you know, com small unit combat actions from the recent past to the near future. Um, um, and so why is this a dream game? It's a dream game because um, as time passes and my own experiences in um, Iraq and Afghanistan slip into the past. Um, even my own experiences become more, well, less, less immediate, obviously. They become, even my own experiences kind of start feeling just maybe a tiny bit like history. Um, there's that distance. And believe it or not, I'm now thinking, I believe me, there were years when I did not feel this way, but now, now I almost want to not lose the, um, not, not necessarily the immediacy. Uh, okay. The immediacy can be <laughs> left behind, but I, I almost don't want to lose the, the ground kind of the granular ground level perspective from experience. Uh, so in other words, small unit combat action, simulation game like Tick, Troops in Contact, would be a dream game for me because I would like it to, I would like it to allow me to essentially, whenever, you know, whenever I wanted to, um, to re, not, you know, certainly not re-experience, but um, re um, uh, to re, well, okay, I was wrong there. Maybe it is a, a form of re-experience. It's a form of re-experience. So yeah, okay, re-experience um, the past. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, but it, you know, but it would have to be real. Uh, however that's defined, however I would define it, 
it has to be, uh, yeah, it has to be genuine. Um, so that, that, I'm not sure there's much more to say about that for now, but that, that is why a small unit combat action game like Tick that I've been kicking around, uh, is one of my three dream games. Um, second one, it's completely different. Um, I actually would like to, you know, have, oh, I'll say at this point that of the, uh, regarding these three dream games, these are games that I would like to see exist, completed, produced, and games that I would really like to play. Now, if enough time passes and they don't materialize, then obviously I would think seriously about, you know, doing them myself, okay? But, you know, for example, this second one, a Dark Ages um, battle game, I'm not going to sit here and say this is a game I really want to design. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't have a strong motivation to design a game like this. I would like some, you know, I'd like to play a game like this. Uh, but again, if I guess if enough time passes and I don't see it, uh, I don't find it, uh, then I'll look at designing it. Now, the other thing is, of course, I'm looking for this type of Dark Ages battle game. Um, and I haven't found it yet, uh, but maybe I've missed it. So what I'm talking about, if you can imagine, take the detail and complexity. Take the detail and the complexity of a bar battles from the age of reason and apply that to dark ages battle game and the reason why i think this would be so interesting well actually let me before i talk about why this would be so interesting let me just say that i would want this to be a uh, i would want this to be a a groundbreaking design that looks at dark ages battles in a way that perhaps they've never been looked at before in, in a tabletop gaming format. What I mean by that is, and let me, let me just reach back to history, academic history. Um, so I'm going to reach back into some general ideas, pull, and I'm pulling these from academic history. Um, the Dark Ages were, for the longest time, considered um, low, low cultural um, times. They were considered, you know, very simple, almost near barbarian. Of course, even the term barbarian there is loaded. But uh, and along with that, for a long time, um, historians considered the art of war during the Dark Ages to have been, well, some went so far as to say effectively non-existent. Um, Others said it was the art of war was, you know, incredibly rudimentary, um, but that was only a generation of scholarship. Um, there was another generation of scholars that came along and said, "Well, this is not really accurate. Um, it's not that the art of war was. It's not that the art of war was dormant. It's not that the art of war was uh, had disappeared or anything." No, it's, it's, uh, first of all, there was a lot more going on in war than, uh, maybe had been previously, um, considered. So there's more going on during the dark ages and the art of war was not absent. Uh, it was there and it was there probably to a degree to which, uh, um, again, earlier historians had not, uh, you know, properly um, appreciated. Um, so there's that. Second, there's simply the idea that um, I, I've talked about this before. You know, uh, war is war. Uh, you know, death in battle is death in battle. Soldiers are soldiers. There's a huge, I believe, and this is nothing but a belief. This is not a. This is not an academic argument by any stretch, but. Um, I have a belief that there's a huge amount of continuity, okay, um, across the ages. 
um, and and even across cultures. I don't even I don't even set the cross cultural uh, factor. I don't even set that aside. I include that even across cultures. Um, there's a lot of continuity, a lot of continuity, and so I think that you know Dark Ages battles were not. They were basically they were not uninteresting mass skirmishes. I don't believe that. I don't believe Dark Ages battles were were you know idiotic. But even saying idiotic is a is a loaded way of putting that. They weren't they weren't mindless clashes. Um, I just don't believe that. I believe that there was. I believe there was soldiering. I believe there there was there was. There were, there were unit dynamics, um, and there was an art of war. Art, the art of war, I believe, was still there. Um, uh, so, so th- this is kind of the premise. My premise for a bar level complexity uh, take on Dark Ages battles is to say the premise is okay, there's a lot going on here that could be dealt with. Uh, A a Dark Ages battle war game doesn't have to reflect that frankly older, uh, somewhat outdated uh, historical perspective that the Dark Ages was was simple and even even uninteresting. Um, So I, I imagine that maybe what might come out if you wanted to uh, work to add detail and complexity to a Dark Ages battle game. There might be a lot of unit and leader differentiation um, at a very, you know, at a a level of detail that I just haven't found. Um, um, I will say, I mean, I should say that I've seen some examples of, I can't remember the name and it's across the room and I can't see it, but um, I will say that I've run across a few games that, that have kind of gone in this direction that I'm thinking of, but no surprise, they're all miniatures rules sets. Um, so I am talking, I am talking about a, um, a paper map encounter. I don't know if it would be hex encounter, but paper map encounter, dark ages, battle game, that has bar level uh, detail and complexity. Now, again, it, there, you know there may not be a lot. There may not be a lot to do with formations, but I think there would be more treatment of formations than I've seen in hex encounter games for the Dark Ages. Um, but yeah, just just. There might be some new areas to explore when adding detail and complexity to a Dark Ages battle game that I'm kind of, uh, uh, you know, speculating about. All right. The third dream game for me, um, this is one of those uh, um, <laughs> almost a... Uh, uh, a palm to the forehead idea, like, of course. Um, I have no, and, and I should point out that this uh, idea for a game, I have n- no clear idea how this could be done and be successful as a simulation game. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know, but... So we're talking about a, a simulation game where it's basically task force, um, task force uh, operations, um, task force operations in Afghanistan, Operation During Freedom, but the the focus is on the planning and then execution of the of the operations. Um, so this comes from, and by task force, I mean anything from a battalion task force up to, uh, no, no, I, I, I'll just keep it at battalion task force, even if that battalion task force is fairly large 
and fairly large, meaning fairly l or quite a bit larger than a a normal U.S. Army um, infantry light infantry uh, battalion. Okay, where does this come from? This this is this is the type of dream game idea that I think of when I ask myself, okay. Um, as a matter of fact, I was uh, listening to an interview um, recently, uh, an interview of a musical artist uh, who was asked kind of how he... So this musical artist, I, and by the way, I know very little about him. This is not... I'm not a fan of this person, uh, but I found it an interesting interview nonetheless. So we're talking about an, uh, a musical artist who is considered to have... Um, um, to some degree, like blazed a new trail in, in mixing genres or whatever, um, but considered uh, uh, especially original as opposed to, I guess his his peers. Okay, so he was asked, "How did he like? How did he even get the idea to kind of go down this this?" novel path of mixing genres and in doing it in the particular way that he, he did. Uh, anyways, none of that's important. What's important is where, where he said, well, I was just, I was just writing music that spoke to my experience. Oh, uh, so obvious. Yes. So obvious. Um, and so when I think about, okay, set aside things I like, um, in military history, set aside things I like in um, military art, military science, set aside what I like in war games. Um, if I were going to do, if I were going to put together a simulation game um, and it was, it was going to actually speak from my experience, now, this isn't, this is setting aside tick, okay, I've already talked about tick, I'm if I cut that out, because that's already covered, of what remains, kind of what is the, the what is the large block of experience that would be kind of an obvious source uh, um, as an inspiration for game design, and it would be task force operations planning and execution. Um, I had, you know, I had the fortune. To, uh, I had the fortune to do a lot of task force operations planning, um, set aside execution. Yes, execution too, but that's, I mean, I had far more opportunity to plan operations for, anyways, to plan operations uh, than I even did to, to participate. Um, but to, to, to put it bluntly, I had a lot of experience um, and again, I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to plan a lot of operations and then basically see them unfold um, and to see others execute, to see others execute my plan and to kind of learn lessons from it all. And then I'm thinking, huh, you know, I, I, up until very recently, I never, ever thought that that had anything to do with gaming. I really didn't. As a matter of fact, I thought, no, there's no, these are, there's a, there's a firewall between that experience and war games. But now I'm thinking, hmm, again, I don't know how it would be, I don't know how it would actually materialize, but that is kind of, by experience, that's kind of what I, what I can um, talk to. So, so maybe I should take a look, you know, so maybe I should take a look at some point uh, about how um, that might be put into a simulation game. Um, and here, of course, it would have to be not just real to experience. I guess I can always say that, but uh, it has to actually, I guess, show participants, players, um, give insight into this world of task force operations planning in Afghanistan on real ground against real forces using real forces um, but 
the emphasis on task force operations planning and execution is that it's uh, it's not uh, it's not necessarily a simulation game from the headlines and it's not necessarily uh, to use that term sexy um, it's not it's not necessarily you know Hollywood worthy um, so that would be the challenge frankly um, but you know designers in the past I think have taken topics that uh, one would have thought uh, you know couldn't be couldn't be done in a way that uh, engaged um, participants um, very well yeah, and they've done it and they've succeeded so all right so three dream games um, dream of course is in quotes I would have liked a better term there but you know um, three dream games uh, tick troops in contact small unit combat action game a uh, dark ages battle game with the level of detail and complexity seen in the battles from the age of reason series and then a, a task force operations planning and execution uh, simulation game based on operation enduring freedom